previously on Buck Command. I don't see Willie anywhere. My old buddy Carter Smith called me up. Willie, I got you and Chipper set up in the booth in Atlanta. This is something that, that all of us have wanted to do from the time we were five, six, seven years old and getting our first taste of hunting. Got traded to Boston for a week and then went back to Atlanta. Basically, our business meetings have to happen at all these odd sort of places. You know, with the baby and everything, I'm gonna be on lockdown. Your first hunt's gonna be Adams. You seen enough of Seattle for one day? Get out of here. Let's get. Buck Command. Protected by Under Armour. Well, they're not going to send a private plane into Fort Scott to pick us up. Really, where everything happens at Buck Commander, you know, happens in my office, which is, you know, on my recliner. You know, I've got my coffee, my laptop, my TV. Well, you get him up there, and so. We'll just go back to the original plan of surprising him like that, so. Jeff LaRoche, who is Adam's brother, and he and Jen, who's Adam's wife, want to fix up this old Suburban for Adam and give it to him as a surprise for his 30th birthday. I didn't know what you were talking about when I heard you say that. Well, I'm saying that, that defeats the purpose anyway, because we're trying to get him to Kansas City. So. I started planning the dinner and the cake and Willie and the Suburban probably around in June. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. All right, I got to take this call. OK, talk to you later. Good call. See you. The Suburban has been in our family for 25 years now. My father has probably put three different engines in it, a couple, at least two transmissions. I think there's mechanics all over the Midwest that have had a crack at that. I bought it for like $2,000. I think roughly we figured I had somewhere between seventeen dollars and $18,000 in it. The thing has been through a lot, and it's got a ton of sentimental value to Adam. He, the last three years, he's talked about redoing it. He's like, man, we just need to redo it. Push! Come on, boys. Come on. Come on. I said, load that thing up, get it down here to West Monroe. So I've got to burn every favor I got around town to get this thing fixed up. And they want the ultimate hunting vehicle. Well, what do you think? I don't know if we can be able to tackle this. I see oil leaks everywhere. Sure you can't just buy a new one? You know, this kid's looking at it, he's like, well, it's going to be tough. And I said, dude, pull it off, get it done. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a big surprise, I can tell you that. Well, it's going to be a big surprise when you see the bill when we get done with Easy it. Night. So we brought the Suburban in for the initial phase. This is just to get it running. Now, from here, we're going to take it over to Skyjackers. I talked to the guys over there and I said, hey, let's get this thing done. They're like, we'll make it look sharp as it can be. All right, boys, I'm going in. We've got to have this thing lifted up with tires and rims. So I would have to go check on them all the time over at Skyjacker headquarters. Check that bypass valve. They came through with what they said they were going to do. Turned out, I think, phenomenal. Boys, drop her down, let's go. Well, we were attempting to make the ultimate hunting vehicle, but I think for Adam, it was exactly Adam's personality. You better not be He's different in that he's really, he's so laid back, he brings people together. Right like your hands, fellow buck man, just had his first child. That's the future crop of buck commander. Adam LaRoche is right up there with the best hunters that I've ever seen. He walks that fine line of being laid back, but under the surface, being intense about what he does. Being involved in all the buck commander stuff, Adam and I work very well together. They're so passionate about hunting. Looky here. 
as a group, man, they are one of the most uh, dynamic groups and fun to be around. They're all down to earth. Don't shoot yet. And I think it shows in the, their videos that it's, it's about having a good time too. It's not just about kill. What do you want? Buck Commander. It's just as exciting sitting around the campfire as actually drawing back on a big buck. He and I are very close and we can talk and we'll argue. So every day when Adam's chewing me out for not doing any work and I can't even tell him that I'm working on his stupid Suburban, he'll be hearing about that when he gets it. Hey, did somebody order that pizza? What'd you say? I know he hit a home run last night. I need to call him. When it comes to scheduling hunts, uh, it's a very difficult task. Hang on, I'll call you back. All right. One of the hardest things for, for us to do is to get everybody on a schedule. I mean, you've got guys that live all over the country that have these crazy jobs, you know, either catch them in the morning as they're going or as they're going home from the ballpark. We can do either right before Roaches. I'm gonna be at Roaches for a week and a half, I know. Yeah. So what are y'all doing on the uh, on your wall of hatch? Y'all know when you're gonna hunt it? I'm gonna kill a deer down on that funnel. You're only gonna be here a few more weeks, huh? Yeah, we got two more home stands. So your first hunt's gonna be Adams and it's just a tremendous hassle, I guess, just to try to get everybody in the same place to see where we're gonna hunt. The group hunts are actually not as bad to schedule because we know it'll be either Adams or Chippers, so they're not so bad. We can lay a date down and say, everybody show up at this time. Adam LaRoach, AKA Roachy, and this is my place. It's great having everybody come out here and hunt every year. Is the fact that a lot of these guys get to come out and see a, a different part of the country that they haven't seen. This week, uh, the first get together for the Buckmen of the year, this is probably the pinnacle of the, the biggest group trip we have all season. We try to get together at least two group hunts like this every year where we can get everybody in camp at the same time. And to me, this is what Buck Commander is really about. Oh, what a start. This is my first venture with the Roachy at the E3 here in Kansas. It's beautiful. You know, there's more fields than, than woods, but then thickets are just full of big deer. It's like being at a five-star resort in the woods. You know, hunting in the Midwest in general is a lot different than, than what I'm used to hunting down in Texas. Normally, we would come into camp and we would say, if we kill anything at all, we're lucky. When Adam invites us up to his ranch every year, it is one of the highlights. Adam, you know, he built a playhouse uh, for all his friends to come and play. And when we come up, it's, it's fun. We got Carter Smith joining us today in camp. He's so smart that he can't figure out how to get into this blind right now. The trip down here to E3 Ranch here in Kansas was quite interesting. It's the first time I've been. I was driving out here. Well, Chipper said, well, I may just ride with you. I'm used to a lot of game, a lot of opportunities. Here's different. I mean, you can sit all day and see one deer. But if that one deer is 160, 170 inch deer, it makes the whole day worth it. Mate. I got it, baby. I got it, baby. Chipper, first day here. Shot a 10 pointer with trash. If he's joking, I'm gonna kill him. If not, we're gonna be celebrating tonight. Ride the whole. Ride the hole it was the first day of the hunt. About 150 inch 10 point with trash. That's a good shot of that. Mm -hmm. He goes out the first day. And to his credit, he sat all day. We didn't see the first deer until 10 minutes to four. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of respect for you. Oh, come here, buddy. One day. One day. I, don't, I don't believe it.
I'm Mike Miller, AKA Mikey, AKA Mike Miller, the Turkey Killer. With the Buck Commander, you've got Jordan Summit and myself for the two main cameramen. Uh, we've got a tight relationship. We're always back and forth on the phone, setting up the pranks on the guys. Woo! That's what you call funny right there. You're walking. Adam LaRoe, the most laid back guy I've ever met in my life. I ain't gonna lie to you, this is not gonna feel good. I know. Oh. Mike Miller, he not only knows what he's doing in the tree and, and with the camera and, and sound and angles and all that stuff that's over my head, but he can go out and, and scout deer, he knows deer, he, he's been in the woods his whole life. Look like he might have rubbed it just a little bit. Uh, Roche and myself, we put a lot of time in on the E3 and also his 1600 Missouri property, hanging stands, getting trail cameras put out. He's actually, he's my camera guy the whole year. He does a ton of work. He's a professional. He's a professional cameraman. That is a gorgeous young deer. Holy cow, beautiful. I wasn't real excited about not hunting that evening. Well, I got a birthday tomorrow. It's recent news to me that I'm not allowed to hunt tonight because my wife had uh, something planned. She knows that I hate leaving the ranch if I don't have to. I, I cannot stand leaving here. I beat this up. Hopefully get an early 30th birthday present. From June till November, it was nonstop. He's always got to know what's going on, and he's not going to go somewhere unless he wants to go there. And so I really thought that he was going to find out about this. Him turning 30, quite the landmark, so they was super. I mean, Jen pulled it off, and she wanted it to be over the top. So just don't forget that. Everybody's gonna squanch in when he comes in. Say surprise, everybody got it? Jennifer was putting a surprise birthday party together for Adam, and this has been ongoing for, shoot, six months, seven months now. So if you know about the Suburban, do not say, hey, wait till you see the Suburban. That is a total <laughs> surprise. 30 days it took to get that thing from just a absolute piece. I mean, they had to weld wheel wells in it. Just amazing some of the stuff they did to make that thing work. I cannot believe that, that this many people kept that a secret that long. Knowing what all was coming from Friday on and the whole week of hunting, I knew that I was it was gonna be pretty easy to get him to go up there. First thing I see is you know lights in my face, and then kind of look look through the lights and start seeing people that were not supposed to be in this part of the country. And when he walked through the door, there was no doubt he had no clue. And for nobody to slip up and give it up was pretty impressive. I have never seen him speechless like that before. To really not even know what to think. This is unbelievable. Got the whole crew in here. He went straight over to the cake. And I, I think he was just shocked on how it was one of his favorite deer. Now, the cake was a big struggle early on. She finally found someone to do a bust of a deer head. How you doing, man? Thank Good. you. He made the you cake. You did this? Yep, sure did. Well, I guess Jen and, and Adam and, and the kids had watched me on TV while they were away at a away game, and uh, she had decided that I was so close to Kansas City, she had to get me to come do this cake. It was nice seeing Adam react to it. I think he really liked it. The casino's idea was to bring the Suburban up the hallway in front of the banquet room. What is that, dude? Is that my old Suburban? I don't think Adam ever in a million years thought that that's what was going to be coming down that hallway at the casino. And we come strolling through the middle of the casino, and I think it took him a while, I guess, probably to figure out, that's my Suburban. Oh, my God. Now, last time he saw it, it was rusted out in uh, homemade camo. And now it's all jacked up, it's solid black with bed liner. No, you did oh, not. Oh, really? Oh my really? God, boys. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Happy birthday. Thank you. This thing comes pulling right down the, the hallway of the casino. And it took me a second, and I finally realized that that was the old Beater Suburban that me and 
my two other brothers took to college. And to see the job the Skyjacker did was just phenomenal. I mean, it was just a top-notch job. I wish I'd have known years ago you could drive right into a casino. It's perfect. Everything that he would have wanted is like the ultimate hunting vehicle. I got to talk about the nose. Oh, go. you're going, you're going straight to that. You know, Adam and I, our whole friendship is really a roast every day. I mean, they can throw a quarter in your nostril and ride that thing like a horse outside of Walmart. <laughs> That's the nose that I'm looking at. To hear all of their comments about how, you know, he's just such an important part in everyone's life. I don't know that he knew what to think. For everybody to go to that much effort, to go to a whole different city. People are flying in like crazy and coming in. I mean, he knew how special that was. That party really showed me how many good, true friends that I had. Guys that would drop what they're doing, you know, and show up for one night. Just a quick thank you to everybody, I mean it. My 30th birthday was, was the best party and the biggest surprise I've ever been a part of. Thank you to my wife for setting this up. Jen. Okay. We're about three or four minutes away from opening up. <laughs> my wife and I were talking that we needed to do something for the city. It's a cowboy uh, rodeo community. Everybody around here loves country music. Our town started pulling together to raise money to redo an area in our town to make it a big park for all the kids. Adam and Jason are really good friends. So we said, let's do a roping and a concert. And last year I said, would you be interested in, in coming out to Fort Scott? And he goes, I'll come to it for free. We came up to Kansas to, to do a benefit for, for the city of Fort Scott here. And so it was unbelievable how the community just supported this whole event. Concert Saturday night with Aldine, unbelievable. I drove the RV in, they let us park right next to the stage. We hung out in that area, sold a little bit of merchandise. The RV is off the hook. People love it all over the country. The more we get that thing out there, the more people are gonna get to know Buck Commander. It was neat, Jason got to come out. I met him in 2004 and he came and sang the anthem for us. Just kind of stayed in touch. I met Rochi when he was playing for the Atlanta Braves the first time. And the Buck Commander stuff to me is just, it's really interesting, it's fun, it's, it doesn't seem like your normal hunting crew. What you see is what you get with them, you know? It's, so it's, uh, it's fun to, to come over and hang out with those guys. Please join me in a warm round of applause for Adam LaRoche. I think the entire town was showed up for the Jason Aldean concert. Thank you. He looks like a deer in the headlights. He doesn't mention Buck Commander. He just whack, 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 you know. Let's just make sure that they know uh, that we know what we're doing here in Fort Scott, Kansas. So. When I went out to thank people and do whatever, he was mad at me for not saying something about Buck Commander. I said, do you want to go out? and introduce Jason. I'm like, let me, th yeah, I do want to get up there. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got to just totally go on the fly on this one. I didn't know they were going up on stage. And then I hear Willie's voice over the microphone. And Willie loves the microphone. My name is Willie Robertson of Duck Commander and Buck Commander. So I look around, and everybody's on stage. And it's my real moments, the moment to make it happen. I brought along a few of my friends. Matt Duff, Tom Martin, Ron Langerhans, Chipper Jones, and Adam LaRoe. I was really impressed with, with Willie. I mean, he commanded the crowd. He had them hooping and hollering. And, and we've got our fellow deer hunter coming out soon, Jason o. So my quick plan was to hold the note on Aldine and hoping my voice wouldn't go out. It was a strong performance. It was, it was opera-like. And it was a huge success. What's happening, Fort Scott, I still don't know the number on how many people were there. I think there was seven or 8,000 people, which is more than we have in this town. Oh, 
And the show went great. Uh, I think we had somewhere close to 8,000 people at the show, so it was, uh, it was fantastic and raised a lot of money for the city, which was great. Jason coming down here and doing it was awesome. I mean, he put on a great show. He's one of the biggest names in country music right now. For him to take time out of his schedule right before the Country Music Awards and come down to Fort Scott and really says a lot about Jason. A lot of people who make it big time leave and vanish and that's it. And I had people come up to me and say, it's nice to see Adam sticking to his roots. Next week on Buck Country. Chipper has definitely kept the morale up around camp. Are you kidding me with that beer? You guys have been showing up with big beer and it never gets old. If you look up the definition of goat roping, it's actually just a big debacle. <laughs>